Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode we are going to try and get this lander on the surface of Mars and then get it back up again to meet up with this return stage and bring it back to Earth safely. Now in order to do that a lot of things have to go very well or perfectly. So this might end up being a very short episode or it might end up being a sufficiently long episode that's really up to how things work. Uh, the first thing we need to do is aero break down. We aero captured partly and we did the rest of the capture using the engine but we can't afford to use the engine anymore so we have to bring this orbit down to a very low level uh, with, without using the engine just making further passes. And the reason we need to do that is because uh, the this portion of the mission has to be uh, in a position where this portion of the mission can meet up with it again, of course. This does not have a lot of fuel to get into a high orbit. It will need to uh, be in a low orbit uh, on the way up. So, yeah, we could uh, leave the initial mission in a high orbit, but then there's another problem. You see, the communication apparatus is mostly on this side. Uh, this can communicate with this, but the lander cannot communicate directly with Earth, so that causes a bit of a problem. Uh, we would need to make sure that the two portions are in light, line of sight with each other. And if we leave the, the return vehicle in a high orbit, and then have to have the lander do further aero braking passes, for instance, uh, in order to land, then they are going to be in different positions when it comes time to uh, actually make the landing. So we need to make sure they're in line of sight each other, of each other, which means that initially we have to put it into a low orbit, and then when the lander makes its landing run, it will be relatively in the pos same position as the return vehicle in orbit. I hope that's clear. It's, uh, it's a little bit complicated. But, uh, yeah... Yep, that's about the size of it. We've got these. These commutrons are mainly to communicate with this. And we don't have too much other communication to work with. We have just one other satellite in orbit, this this Angua M. So that can help, but uh, we don't want to rely solely upon that. Okay. So uh, we'll probably be landing... Well, anywhere on this, uh, this daylit side should be facing Earth by the look of it. So that's good. So we'll probably be landing around here somewhere. But that's just a plan. Now it's not great that our periapsis is here, but I guess it's okay. The question right now for me is how low do I want that periapsis to bring this orbit down? And we can make uh, any number of... There's, there's nothing else pressing that we have to do. We can uh, go slow and do any number of air breaking passes in order to bring the orbit down. So let's go to Apoapsis and adjust our periapsis. Okay, we are approaching Apoapsis in about 48 minutes. Uh, it looks like our periapsis right now for some reason is 58.5. It seems to be going up for some reason. And I don't know why. This is very strange. There aren't any thrusters open. No, oh, wait, we, we do seem to be... Do we have a leak somehow? I don't know. We do seem to be losing Delta V somehow. How is this? Oh, maybe it's just wiggling around? Now it's going up again. But that's still going up. This is very odd. Hmm... Well, this makes it rather hard to make any sort of adjustment if I can't be sure. I don't want it as... Uh, I was initially going to raise the periapsis. Now I want to lower the periapsis to 60. I want it at 60. Even at that height, I expect it would take uh, quite a long time to bring this down. But now, do I want to do that? <laughs> I, I'm a little bit confused. So, I'm going to activate the RCS. I give it a little burst in this direction and start turning towards that prograde vector. I don't want to go all the way around to the retrograde vector and there's no need to do that. But judging from the way things worked just now, I think 
maybe we'll have to make another adjustment closer in. Okay. Well, anyway, we've got to 60 kilometers. That's what I'm going to work with right now. I'm trusting that that's not low enough that it'll bring me straight down to the surface. That's the one thing I want to avoid at this point. I don't care if it's got to take me a dozen passes to air brake down to the height that I want, or even more than that. I'm going to be exceedingly patient on that. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about this deviating so much, though. I'm wondering why. I mean, it stops during time warp, so, I mean, that should be obvious, but... Okay, well, anyway, let's go over to that side, and then I'll make a final adjustment, even though it's not that efficient over there. Okay, we're still a ways out, uh, eight hours, but uh, the periapsis looks stable right now, so I think I can adjust. Okay, now we're presumably set. I think we'll wait until we're a little bit closer before retracting the solar panels. Now, each of the air braking passes is going to be different. I can't say that uh, the velocity I dump on this pass will be the same as the velocity I dump on the next passes. What I can say is that the velocity I dump on this pass will be the least I will dump on the next passes. I'll always be dumping more velocity each time uh, at, at this height if we uh, assume that uh, periapsis is still 60 kilometers. And that's because the amount of time I spend in the atmosphere will increase each time. Okay, once we're within the the orbit of Phobos, I think we can retract the solar panels around there. Okay, I think I did not have these action grouped, so I'm just going to retract them like this. Okay, we're on 17 hours of battery life. Periapsis is within an hour. I'm going to have SAS hold retrograde. So, yeah. Uh, but I should probably turn it myself initially. Okay, hopefully Smart ASS can take it from here without being too profligate with the RCS fuel. Uh, well, sort of. Okay, into the Martian atmosphere for a second time. That's not going to give us a whole lot of drag, but hopefully it'll give us some. Probably need to burn off about 1,400 meters per second or something like that. Okay, well, 93 kilometers in descending. We've already lost some of our apoapsis, which is good. Okay, we are approaching periapsis here now, below 62 kilometers, with periapsis of 60 kilometers or so. Our apoapsis has definitely descended down. We no longer have as long an orbit as we once did. We are now in a two-day orbit and below. So that's getting quite a bit tighter. Probably, I guess maybe we'll want something higher than 60 kilometers on the next pass. This seems to be a little bit low. Then again, of course, uh, this is just uh, the easy part of the aero braking. Okay, we are now going up again. Still plenty of air braking to do on this pass. We'll still be in the atmosphere. We'll actually be in the atmosphere for longer going out than we were coming in, so. Yep, uh, I'll just try and watch it and make sure we don't fall to the ground. Okay, we're back in space. I think I'll want to raise the periapsis to 65 kilometers for the next pass. We still have about a thousand meters per second left to drop off in order to get to low Mars orbit. But uh, yeah, again, I'll try and be cautious. We've just on that one pass, we bought our orbital period down to 10 hours. So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll err on the side of caution and uh, bring it to 65 kilometers. That Even that might be too low. I'm about to find out. But I'm going to head out up to Apoapsis and make that correction, assuming it doesn't make the correction for me like it did last time. But I think because our orbit is tighter, it'll be better on the numbers than it was when our orbit was barely a capture. Okay, pretty much right on apoapsis, and I'm just gonna lift that periapsis to 65. This should be valuable data for those wishing to do Mars missions in the future. Now, I have to caution though, obviously 
this is point nine zero and uh, things will probably have changed in 1.0.4 I think we should already be lined up with retrograde because I haven't turned the vessel at all so let's see yeah okay it's a little bit scary getting close to a planet like this at high time warp hmm. okay we do have a small reaction wheel here right there I think uh, another one on the probe itself somewhere there so uh, I'm just gonna have those guys do retrograde using SAS you can see they, they don't provide much but we just need it to hold steady at that vector and as we get closer to the atmosphere we will actually be aimed at that vector I think or close to it okay we are approaching periapsis it's deviating a bit from the retrograde vector right now wondering if I should activate RCS to help it out or not two tiny reaction wheels aren't a whole lot to hold this thing steady if it wants to flip out yeah I think I'm gonna give it the RCS okay we are now going up and orbital period is about eight hours so we knocked three hours off of that on the way in and I guess we'll knock a bit on the way out we'll see how much and that'll probably tell us something uh, our velocity we've probably dumped about a hundred and it seems like about a hundred meters per second or so so maybe 200 altogether on this pass with about let's say at least 600 more to go after that as much as 800 possible I think okay we're back out of the atmosphere now and looks like a six hour orbital period which looks like this it's gonna see uh, we've got that inclination to us and a little bit beyond the orbit of Phobos so I think I'm gonna go a little bit higher on the periapsis just for safety's sake let's say 68 kilometers this time um, now let's just go round numbers let's go 70 for reference so I can remember that for future missions after all we may one day want to send Kerbals here even in point nine zero so okay once again RCS we just go like this not even got turned towards the vector okay we have entered the atmosphere and well let's see what happens the ideal situation is that it happens to be the right altitude to bring us to a low orbit uh, if it is too high we might have to risk another pass and of course the lower you get the riskier each next pass is so that's one thing I want to avoid but we might not be able to looks like uh, looks like uh, the sunlit side is still the side facing earth so that's positive I forgot about our little contract though yeah we had a contract to explore these locations uh, that's probably not going to be doable on this mission given the inclination that we currently have I didn't really adjust for that but I was too focused on actually thinking about how to do this properly so we'll have to attempt that sort of thing in a future mission okay we are at uh, 74 kilometers descending to 70 kilometers and it looks like we haven't slowed down much at all so we are going to have to try and dip to 65 kilometers on the next pass I think uh, right now I mean we started off with an orbital period around six hours and we've still got an orbital period around six hours we're not too far away from periapsis here so yep we're gonna have to risk about 65 kilometers again I think then again this could provide a very measured approach as we pass periapsis here I mean if it only brings us a little bit of time that might be the way to go to really fine-tune it properly I, I guess we'll go with the idea that I should aim for dozens of passes rather than try and do it too quickly and fail miserably so yeah maybe I'll keep it at this altitude and just uh, do a few passes here just to fine-tune it 
Well, on the previous pass, we basically shaved the orbital period from 6 hours to 5 hours, and so we'll see what it does this time. Okay. Approaching periapsis again. Looks like it's going to end up taking about another hour off our orbital period when all is said and done. Okay, and that's us passing periapsis, yet another safe arrow breaking pass through the Martian atmosphere. Been delightfully boring so far. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, no explosions for you if you that was what you were looking for, but so far so good as far as the mission is concerned. So, I mean, we're still basically looking at another 600 meters per second. Okay, as expected, that pass brought our orbital period down to four hours or thereabouts. So, yep, that is, that's good. I like when things happen as I expect them to. Ooh, uh, serious planet shine effects right now. You can definitely see the red glow from Mars on our vehicle. Okay, approaching periapsis once again, and this has not had as much of an effect on our orbital period, but that's pretty much expected. What we really need to know is what effect it have on the delta V necessary to bring the orbit down to where we want it to be. And after we pass the periapsis, I will check that. Okay. We are past periapsis. Let me plot that little thing again. Looks like this location is over here now. But uh, by the time it gets around to under our, our orbit, if it ever does, that'll be on the nighttime side. Well, it looks like it's done about 60 meters per second so far, and we could probably expect a total of 100 meters per second on this pass as, as a result. All right, well, I've lost count how many times we've gone around Mars now, honestly. Uh, so, but yeah, it looks like we have to go around again. And uh, I don't think it will cause us any harm. Okay, once again, approaching Apoapsis. We haven't done too much on this pass, it looks like. Yeah, a pretty lackluster pass altogether. Well, we'll pass periapsis once again and see how much delta V we've knocked off. We'll end up with an orbital period less than three hours at least. Okay, so emerging back out of the atmosphere. I guess I'm not going to correct this, even though the periapsis has dipped uh, pretty far below the 70 kilometers I originally set. I don't want to waste any more RCS fuel unless it's absolutely necessary. Double checking the delta V that we need to bring this orbit down. It should be well more than what we were burning off at 70 kilometers, so I don't think there's any reason to worry about this periapsis being that much lower. Well, at these velocities and this altitude, the ground sure looks mighty close now. And uh, this is Valles Marineris, and we can see the altitude true here very important for landing of course and uh, yeah well that's some valley very rugged Do definitely don't want to be landing around here just in case don't want to hit a slope or anything okay back in space again and let's see how much we need we certainly have slowed down a lot more now actually not too far off It's about 200 meters per second. I think I'm going to raise it up back to, uh, back to uh, 70 kilometers again. I think we're spending quite a long time in the atmosphere now. Okay, one way or another, I think this will be the final arrow breaking pass. And then whatever we end up with, we end up with. Uh, might end up being too high, which means that the two parts won't be able to rendezvous, assuming, assuming the lander can even get back to orbit. I, I mean, I've seen varying estimates for how much it's going to take to get back into orbit from the surface of Mars. Uh, it somewhat depends on my piloting as well, and also the thrust weight of the vehicle, which is not high. 
So, yeah, it's a bit complicated. We'll see whether this works out or not. It might not be able to get to orbit, in which case we will, uh, well, it might not even be able to land. So we've got a lot of things to be concerned about. But at least we've gotten the air, air braking done, and I think this will be fine. Okay, here we go for periapsis. It's looking okay, but not great. Apoapsis is still pretty high. It's coming down quickly, though. So that's good. Watching attentively so that things don't go too far beyond where I want them to. We are at Olympus Mons now, it looks like. Is that right? Uh, we're pretty far away from Olympus Mons. I think that's Olympus Mons right there. But there's an old version of the biome file. I'm sure things must have been fixed and all that. We're definitely uh, Ballas Marinera style right now. Okay, approaching space now, and this is it. We've got an uh, apoapsis of 795 kilometers, a periapsis of 67 kilometers. Uh, this portion of the mission will raise that periapsis, uh, but uh, that will not be before we decouple the lander. Uh, to save Delta V, we will just uh, have ladder, uh, lander keep this periapsis, and actually it'll bring it down a little bit. It'll probably bring it down to 50 kilometers, I think will be good. Uh, but uh, we don't want to boost the periapsis and then decouple the lander because that'd be a waste. But here we can come out of physical time warp and we can begin operations including extending solar panels. I'll transfer all available power to the lander and then this side can uh, recharge itself at its own leisure. But uh, it'll, have, it'll have its own power. Uh, the lander doesn't take that much I don't think. I also want to extend the antennae that will help communicate with the lander as well as our other satellite in orbit around Mars. Okay, sunrise. We've got some light. Still not fully recharged. Maybe we can carry things. Well, no, it's best to uh, take care of things here now. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to start. Decoupling, I know, uh, not decoupling, activating tanks. Making sure all that is in order. Okay, I think I can be satisfied with this. Uh, let us undock. This has got to be interesting. I need to make sure that this still has communication when it does. Um, we, we have line of sight with Earth, so that's okay. Alright, let's see. Okay, well, this side definitely has a shortage of power. That's not surprising. And this side... Uh, looks like we have communication, but uh, the, the signal delay. Hmm... It does have a reaction wheel. Let's hope that it can uh, control itself. It seems to be having a little bit of trouble. And this side, I want to also have point prograde. It lost that command. Well, there's some things not quite right about this, but uh, total delta V is less than I thought it was. Oh, well, we've still got the upper tanks locked, don't we? And we have the center tank locked as well. Or did we? Hold on. Oh, we've got this tank locked. Let's unlock that. Hmm. I know we have the SRBs, but that should already be counted. It's that. I guess we were relying on this fuel to do stuff, but... I don't know. There's something weird about the calculations here. I thought I had 4,000 minimum on this. I mean, I think it's just the staging. I think it's just the staging order that's confusing it, hopefully. Hopefully that's what's going on. Otherwise, we're in trouble. But okay. Um, I don't think we've sufficiently sidestepped that mission yet. This mission now has 3,293 on its own, which is excellent. 
Okay, I'm going to have this bring its periapsis down. Hold on, let me ignite the one kilojoule thrusters. That'll take, you know, 10 minutes. And I'll activate RCS, which will also take 10 minutes. Okay, well, we can time warp to all that happening. Actually, we can have the other portion of the mission do its saving itself boost. Okay, it's pretty pretty clear of that right now. We can time warp a little bit more. That's going to drift off. Okay, now it's pretty clear. Okay, so yeah, we might as well use the the RCS. I don't think we want to bother with lighting the main engine again. Okay, we've got the periapsis back into space. Let me just get to 135 and then we'll leave it there. Now back to this little guy. Now we still got the stuff queued up. Okay, well, let us do that. Uh-oh, no connection? Whoa, that was loud. Hmm, no connection. Why no connection? I've had this sort of problem before. I guess part of the problem might be that the return stage has its own little local control, but it definitely has a connection. It certainly has a connection back home. And our antennae should have the range. We've done this sort of thing before. I mean, well, heck, we're not that far away. We're still uh, within spitting distance. In fact, the connection line shows up here. Let me just... Uh, yeah, let me just hop back over there. Maybe it's figured that out by now. Okay, now it has a connection. It's also firing RCS all over the place. Uh... How about find controls on that? We don't need all that happening yet. Okay, so let's bring the periapsis down to 50 odd. Okay, we'll try this. It's imperative that we actually do get down on the first pass, otherwise communication is going to be a dodgy business. Uh, right now, we will have the return stage above us pretty, pretty certainly. But uh, if it goes around again, there will be deviations and we might not have it over us. Periapsis is not in the greatest location over there. I'd like to land before that, not all the way over there, because that's when we're going to start losing connection with Earth. Okay. Lots to be concerned about. Now, what I'm going to do is arm all the parachutes, because, heck, I'm even going to put the... well, I, maybe we shouldn't put the landing gear down. Uh, that could cause some aerodynamic unhappiness, but let's arm these. Half of them are drag chutes, or drogue chutes. Half of them are main chutes. So half of them will deploy at a fairly high altitude. Let's see. Well, I got the toggle gear signal, but actually it's reading gear up, so that's fine. We will have to put the landing gear down ahead of time, it looks like, so that's an important point. Now, Smart ASS can't operate without communication, but Remote Tech can. So I will have Remote Tech hold retrograde. Okay, I don't know exactly how long we have until, well, it says 17 minutes to periapsis. Maybe that's the best indication I've got for how long we have until we're going to land. So I guess right when we hit the atmosphere, I'll put the landing gear down. Maybe I'll trust Smart ASS after all. Or maybe will they conflict or battle it out between them? the remote tech computer and smart ASS for control over this vehicle. Okay, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna tell it to put the landing gear down knowing that it's gonna happen in like eight minutes. And hope that we don't reach the surface beforehand. We've got some tiny little guys here. 
and then just a bunch of thrusters here but we've also got some tucked on the center there maybe I'm just gonna disable these probably not the best thing to do actually Well, hopefully the atmosphere can help us out with the whole not pointing in a direction other than retrograde. I'm pretty sure our center mass should be down here somewhere. I'm just going to get surface information, so I'm not doing science right now. I've decided to turn on SAS. I don't know how it's going to react to that, but or whether it's going to react to that in time for that matter. I think I can maybe I can help out this mess. It doesn't seem to be doing it on its own. Yeah, it's actually uh, uh, just for a sec there I was trying to control it. It's actually deliberately pushing it away. It wasn't trying to help out at all. Yeah, the perturbations are largely just remote tech computer not wanting to hold retrograde. Uh, this one's pretty bad. I'm trying to push it toward... Oh, it's just flipped around. Well, once the parachutes deploy, we'll orient the correct way. Well, I could put... I could let it use the RCS full blast. There. Go. But I think it's gonna condemn us to not be able to get back to orbit. Well, we'll see how much heat we get out of this. Not the graceful landing I was hoping for. Well, looks like we're landing around here. Pretty clear spot. Still have communication pretty Definitely. But we're going to be coming down pretty fast right now. I think the drogue chutes are configured for 30 kilometers, so we might be getting them way too early. Well, we're getting the landing gear here, out of all things. Um, let's see. Oh, toggle info is also timed? Is that a thing? Oh, well, that's unnecessary. Okay, well. We'll get the info long after it's really useful. So just cruising on through. Two minutes to impact or so. Hmm. Suicide burn countdown, obviously not good. Oh, wow, they deployed. I actually didn't expect them to deploy at this sort of velocity. Go figure. Okay, well, it's really rocking now. Don't fight it. Don't fight it, remote tech. Just let it do its thing. Okay, well, we are slowing down. 26 kilometers in altitude. I'm really surprised those parachutes worked. I'm really surprised. Thought we would have to be going much slower. Don't know when the main chutes will deploy. And obviously I can't check. I've got a bit of a rotation right now. Pretty sure the suicide burn countdown is totally wrong here. I mean, for one thing, we've got you know 700 meters a, sec a second to burn and we've got you know an 11 minute stage with 2,000 meters per second or more it can't be 32 minutes I don't get it okay well we would like some other parachutes it's not going to be just these drogue chutes that's not gonna be enough 
and I still plan to use some engine power to assess down safely. Ten. Okay, main shoots are out at ten kilometers. Okay, that's good. What kind of velocity will that bring us to? And they haven't fully opened yet, obviously they're just uh, partially opened. Okay, really tense here. Three kilometers. Nothing's happened yet. Oh, something's happened. Okay, two kilometers. Whatever happened didn't happen enough. Oh, more things happening. Okay, lots of lag. We are slowing down, but not enough. Still going more than a hundred meters per second. I think I'm too late. Of course, uh, if you're wondering, I couldn't have fired the sod fuel rocket. I tried. I pressed spacebar a few times to try and fire the sod fuel rockets in order to get going back up again and maybe try the rendezvous part of it. But uh, yeah, obviously, uh, the signal delay prevented that from happening. And I couldn't have done that ahead of time because, of course, uh, well, that would be silly. Uh, so, yep, just a little bit. I didn't. Uh, fully understand how little TWR I had at that point and we couldn't slow down slow down enough okay well uh, well this was uh, this was an attempt it didn't work out quite right maybe we should I uh, well we let, let's look on the bright side let's look on the bright side the bright side, of course, is that we have delivered this return stage to orbit around Mars safely. It is in orbit, and it is just waiting for some payload to bring back home. So all we have to do now is send over a new lander, perhaps a more robust lander, something heavier because now we don't have to push this as well as that probe over to Mars so we could uh, get a much larger lander and uh, yeah then we can have that do its thing and rendezvous with this now that requires some matching of orbits and a little bit of work on my part but uh, yeah so we can try that and this will just hang out it's got nice little hypergolic fuels which will not uh, boil off or anything like that so yeah all is well still we still have an opportunity to make this salvage this whole thing and make this work for us so yeah that'll be the plan and uh, I think I will uh, build that for the next episode so we'll try and launch something like that next time so yeah this is not we we are not giving up on this so uh, yeah on that note thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.